much for watching or listening. Liam Hartree here, new official interviewer for Spartan Promotions. And today we've got a very, very special guest who I'm very excited to uh, get on the show. This man has a lot to share. He has a lot of passion, a lot of powerful energy. Robbie Adamson, world lightweight, bare knuckle pit fighting champion. And he's going to be defending his title on the 26th, uh, which is actually coming up at the time of this interview. We're actually in fight week. So we're going to be talking about the upcoming fight, but we're also going to be having a look back over Robbie's career so far, including when he won the world title and everything that went down with that. His training methodology, his psychology, getting into the psychology of a champion in the most brutal fighting sport out there, pretty much. So we've got a lot to talk about. We've got some brilliant stuff to talk about today, and uh, this, is a, this is an exciting one, guys. So, champ, before we get into all of it, mate, I just want to say, obviously, big thank you for coming on. I always say thank you to everybody, so thank you for making the time, mate, and... That's much appreciated, honestly. Yes, yes, Liam. Yeah, nice to meet you as well, bro. Thank you. Yeah, absolute pleasure, mate. It's good to uh, it's good to meet you. Now, guys, we've been having a quick chat before starting the recording, and I got to say, this is going to be a firecracker of an interview. If uh, anything I just heard is to go on, so uh, so let's get this on the road. So, champ, obviously, you know, we're in fight week now. At the time of this, obviously, if anyone watching it later, that's fine. But that's where we are. So, this fight is coming up on Saturday against a tough Mexican. Gilberto uh, Aguilar, as well, I'm saying, yeah. Aguilar, yeah. Yeah. experienced guy, obviously in bare knuckle in uh, MMA. Him and his brother, you know, I mean, he's got a lot. Yeah, of he's had uh, 23 pro MMA. Um, he's had a few professional boxing f fights with. Uh, um, oh, what's he called now? Um, I can't remember. Is 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 one of his trainers? Uh, Oscar De La Hoya uh, has been on his Oscar De La Hoya's promotions uh, as a pro boxer and he's had two uh, BKB fights in America um, one I'm not sure I think it might it were a, a big show I'm not sure if it was BKFC or one of them uh, and that were in a, in a cage in his big circle um, that one was a little bit of a bad fight because didn't. none of them wanted to engage it was first Benical fight it went full five rounds but there wasn't much going on to be honest with you I turned it off because I was bored of watching it um, and then he had uh, 2021, he had the fight of the year in BYB, which is a triangle ring. It's a full ring that's cut off in half, uh, which means that you have no choice, but you have to engage. And he engaged with a brilliant fighter, proper, properly engaged. And they had a good old scrap and they got 2021 fight of the year for BYB, which, you know, that's it's, a, it's, a, it's and, and to be honest with you, it were, it, it were close. It wasn't even, you know, quite a close fight. I mean, he lost the fight, but, you know, it was pretty close. So I know he's done out of two fights that he's had, he's done 10 rounds. So the kid's not going to go anywhere, go anywhere quickly. Do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, fantastic. Now, obviously, in the build up to the fight, you know, just getting into, into your training, how your preparations have been going and everything like that. Basically, just, just to get a little feel for how you're feeling in fight week, you're obviously full of confidence. Um, so just share with us a little bit about, you know, your training, your camp for this fight. Just anything you'd like to share about the, the training aspect, really, you know, in, in your own words, basically. Yeah, I mean, I train, I train all the time. Um, I'm 35 years old, so I physically... I come to the decision a couple of years ago that, you know, if I'm going to start, if I'm going to get back into some form of fighting, then I need to stay in it and stay in the game all the way through COVID, been training nonstop. I had, luckily for me, a few of my gyms are still open, based in Bradford. We've got a big Bernacle pit fighting and also Bernacle ring following. Uh, it's untrue, man. And some of the gyms were just, just wide open for us. Do you know what I mean? Uh, no problem. You know, we just to sneak through a couple of doors and get in there. Um, so I've always trained and obviously building up to this fight, I'm, I'm coaching as well. So I coach, uh, it's half six till 7.30 and then I'm training then until I'm done. Do you know what I mean? I'll even join in class before if I need to do, uh, I do need to do a bit of extra work. Do you know what I mean? I've implemented a few other little things. I mean, cause I, at the beginning, literally at the beginning of this fight camp, I thought I'd snap my leg. Uh, I do airsoft shooting, uh, which is, for those who don't know, it's shooting uh, uh, imitation firearms at each other uh, with plastic BBs. And I, uh, I put a fancy pair of boots on, which were meant to be super good, and they were that good. My uh, the, the boot, the ankle support were that good. My leg nearly snapped. When I say nearly snapped, I were, I were in some pain, mate. Like, I thought, I, I heard it crunch. I was in hospital at 3 o'clock in the morning, getting an extra aid. Um, and I had to literally not train at the beginning of the fight camp. Uh, so I had a few few weeks out then uh, and then I, and then I literally went, got back to it training doing what I needed to do and yeah just kept going uh, since then I've implemented a few other little things um, I trained 
I do train really hard and literally my foot will cause me trouble a few weeks ago, um, which stopped me from even skipping. I couldn't even skip and I couldn't actually uh, uh, train in, in uh, orthodox. So I had to train southpaw uh, to relieve the pressure off my foot. Um, but now what I've, I've literally, I look after, I, do, I hate feet and, and literally my feet, I, you know, I don't even like touching them. But now I know that I have to protect them and I have to look after them. And I've got myself a foot spa. So I sit there on a the night time with a foot spa, you know, doing all the girly shit, uh, just looking after your body. Because at, at this age or any age, really, if you're fighting, you're active or any sort of sports that you're doing, if you're pushing it, you need to look after yourself. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and same with supplements. Uh, taking the right supplements, eating the right foods, training the correct correct way, all that implements uh, mindset, which is again is is key on any form of training. Do you know what I mean? Um, and that's you know that's what you've had, I've had to do to build up to the, towards this fight. And now, right now, this minute, I'm in full protection mode. Uh, literally, I mean, I won't even take the dog for a walk, man, just in case my dog pulls my shoulder out or anything like that. Um, my wife doesn't even sleep in my bed. Do you know what I mean? At the moment, because her and a couple of my kids have had like some form of sickness bug, and I've kicked them out. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Uh, I'm sleeping on my own. So until they're better, then then my wife's allowed back in my bed. Do you know what I mean? That's how serious I'm taking. I take it uh, anyway. Do you know what I mean? Because I mean, at life's old Christian, you know what? If I get this book now and I feel poorly, I'm sick on the day, man. I'll be sick in a bucket and I'll, and I'll, I'll just carry on fighting. I, I'm not bothered, do you know what I mean? I'm a fighter uh, and nothing's going to nothing's gonna pull me out, do you know what I mean? That fight, not a chance, no chance. The guy's uh, Aguilo, he's flying in from Mexico on uh, on Thursday. All right, so until he's landed in this country, yeah, and, you know, I, I obviously, you know, I'm focusing on him, but... Uh, you just never know, do you know what I mean? What what could happen? But I'm 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 I'm, I'm praying the fact that he gets a nice journey over here and he's here on on on, on Thursday and we can um, rock and roll from there. Do you know what I mean? Ideally. Amazing. Well, it's going to be a cracking fight. It's going to be a fight for the ages as well. I think it's going to be a really good one. Now, in terms of predictions and things, I'm not sure how you feel about this, but at this stage, do you have a prediction for the fight in terms of like what round you think you'll get him out there? How you know how you think the fight's going to progress with the different styles between you and him, and just anything sort of in the prediction side of things that you want to share with? Uh, well, Lisa? you know what. I some people the thing is with pit fighting yeah a lot of people think it's just a scrap yeah and you know what it can look like a scrap but what, what goes on in there when those people that are not just scrapping are actually implementing certain things I do things in a fight that you can't see um because you don't know I'm doing it unless I'm sitting there pointing at the camera and what I'm doing and why I'm doing what I'm doing for that reason then you might click on oh yeah shit I didn't even think you'd do that do you know what I mean but I was and there were you know there's certain things that I do do um you know, to, to get to where I need to get to. And the thing is, with me, I like a fight. Do you know what I mean? I love the fight. Uh, one of my fights that you can see on the internet, on YouTube, is me giving somebody 30 seconds head start. Do you know what I mean? And that's not me saying, yeah, yeah, I'm getting beaten up for 30 seconds. No, that's me saying, listen, I'm not going to throw a punch for 30 seconds. And that guy is going to get oxygen starved. And after 30 seconds, that's my turn to rock and roll. I had my corner man, I had a whistle, he blew once for 10 seconds, twice for 20 and three times for 30. That was my time to shine. And literally, I knocked him down within no time at all after that. After that first 30 seconds, boom, boom, job done. Do you know what I mean? Well, not done because he got back up, do you know what I mean? Because he thought he was winning the fight, so his adrenaline rush was well, kicking in, and he, he was winning that fight as far as and he was winning that fight because I wasn't even throwing a punch, do you know what I mean? But that's the reason why I give that 30 seconds. It's not, it wasn't even a tactical maneuver thinking that I'm going to need to do this to beat him. That were a tactical maneuver because I, I, I do this for fun. I'm, I, I love it. I love fighting, do you know what I mean? And and, and the whole point of it was why the average bare pit fighting is 36 seconds long. So if I'm going to give 30, someone 36 seconds head start, then I know I'm going to be in there for longer than 30 seconds, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and then my last, the, the fight after that, um, I ended up saying, look, because they won't let me do 30 seconds. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, I like to have fun. I know I'm gonna, I knew I was going to win. And uh, I said, to, I said, look, okay, if, if I... Um, if, if if this is a boring fight and I put him away early, I want I want I want I want my, I want my wife to headbutt me. Do you know what I mean? And there's there's footage on camera of my wife sticking not on me six times after the after the fight, uh, clean on my nose. Then I'm, I'm full, full headbutts, yeah. And and she, I'd just been in a bernacle pit fight and she headbutted me straight on my nose six times and she were worse off than me. Her head was fucking bruised, wrecked. You could see like a unicorn on her head, man, from head putting me straight in my nose. And I didn't have a scratch on me. Do you know what I mean? After all that. Uh, and then I had a good a good little scrap with um, 
what's his name's Jacob Williams. All right, didn't have a clue anything about him. I said to literally said to Christian because my opponent Willie Delaney from Ireland pulled out last minute, and uh, I said, look, just get the biggest, meanest, angriest guy that you can find, yeah, and I'll fight him. Irrelevant to who it is, or irrelevant to what size he is or weight he is, just put him in that pit. And obviously, you've seen pictures of that of of what he looked like. The whole place at Cedar Court fought. I mean, I came into the in-betweeners song, do you know what I mean, on my dance tune. He coming to some gangster tune and I'm coming to in-betweeners song doing a silly little dance, do you know what I mean? That's because I love it and I, I'm having fun, do you know what I mean? And uh, he literally uh, broke my jaw in the first 10 seconds, do you know what I mean? And I knew within 10 seconds, he's giving me the hardest shot that he can and I'm still stood up, man. He didn't even give me a flashbang or nothing, do you know what I mean? And I'm ready, I'm ready, waiting for his power to drop. And the second his power dropped, man, fam, it's my time to shine. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, and again, I knew I was, I was going to be in that as soon as he started unloading and doing what he needed to do. Um, I mean, he's obviously just moved on from there with the fights. Do you know what I mean? But I'm a true fighter. Just fucking bare love it. Yeah, your, your passion for it comes over in an amazing way. So I want to get into that a little bit because obviously we've talked about the upcoming fight. We've given that a mention. It's going to be an absolute barn burner, whatever happens. But, you know, obviously talking about what got you into the sport itself, particularly with the bare knuckle side of things. And you mentioned before we started recording you about street fighting and about different fighting styles and different things that you do. So initially, what was like the inspiration for you to get into pit fighting, to get into bare knuckle pit fighting? Where did that start? Where did you first get the idea that... Basically, I've been a, I've been a box, boxing all my life, uh, ABA, amateur pedigree, uh, giving it some beans, in and out of it. So, you know, I've, I've done a fair few fights, but I've been in and out of it all the time. Uh, moved to Spain for a couple of years. And even when I were in Spain, I were in IB for sparring and training with the Guardia. I used to travel halfway across the island to train in a gym with the Guardia. Uh, and the Guardia over there are mean as fuck, do you know what I mean? Literally. Um, and I used to jump in there and, and have a little scrap with all. And look, obviously, it's legit, do you know what I mean? So I got to beat, beat Gardia up and get a slap off them, and, and it was just fun. Um, but uh, and out, out, of the, out of the gym, um, I've been a street, I'm a street fighter, uh, born and bred street fighter. You know, I hate bullies. I can't deal with bullies. Um, people who, I, you know, there's no wrong with someone thinking they're hard. That's fine. Uh, a lot of people use verbal uh, chat. Uh, to to uh, as as a as a, uh, a way of uh, self defence. So if they look big enough and they can the the gobs big enough and they sound hard enough, most people back down. Now I don't back down. Do you know what I mean? And they most people can't handle that. Um, so uh, there's people out there, to, I, I use it, you know, I've got a little trick when if someone like, let's just say someone spilled a drink, yeah? Let's just say I bump into someone and I spill a drink and it's an accident. If it's a PR accident and, and or, or, you know, if it's something, no, if they're kicking off with me and starting on me, I say, look, yeah, there's no, there's no point us fighting over, over nothing, right? Let's me and you, right? Just me and you, not us mates. We'll go outside, right? And I'll fight you for everything you've got in your pocket, for everything that I've got in my pocket, right? And... And, and, and the start thinking about it then. Do you know what I mean? And we'll go out of the corner, we'll go out of the way, out of the way of the cameras and just crack, let's just crack on, yeah? Um, and more often than not, they're, they're like, you know what, mate, forget about it, yeah? Just forget about it. And that's, and, and, and literally, that's normally how it works. Now, sometimes they'll follow you and they'll say, yeah, okay, fair enough. They'll get to the door and more often than not, they'll, they'll stand behind the bouncers at that point to try to make the bouncers not let me back in. Do you know what I mean? But I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I, when I'm a fighter, just because I love fighting, it don't mean I'm a nasty person or an angry person. I'm the sort of guy that if you're if you're in a, in a queue um, at a kebab shop and someone comes over pushing in, giving it big beans, and you're stood there with your wife and you're obviously going to say something because your wife might have said something. She might say to the bloke, excuse me, uh, there's a queue. And that guy might be arrogant and say, fuck off. Do you know what I mean? Now, and, and start with that guy. Now, I'm the sort of guy that'll stand there and say, listen, this guy don't want to fight you. He's not a fighter, but I'll fight you. So if you've got a problem and you don't want to get to the back of the fucking queue, then let's me and you have a little roll around outside and then we'll decide who comes back in the shop. Do you know what I mean? And more often than not, it's not because I don't do it aggressively. I'm not, I'm not being angry. I don't use my verbal uh, gob. I don't tell people what I do. I'm a skinny 11 stone lad. Do you know what I mean? And, I, and, 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 and I've literally fought b big lads street fighting. And I'm not just one lad. 
I've had naughty fights like with fucking gangs, groups of people. Do you know what I mean? And and I've, I, I, I shouldn't even be alive right now, to be honest. With you, because some of the fights that I've been in, I wouldn't. If I got, went back to town now uh, and got in some of the fights that I've been in, I'd be I'd be dead. I'd be stabbed up, man, hundred percent. And that's why I'm a little bit reluctant to go uh, clubbing or uh, to pubs anymore. Do you know what I mean? Because literally, I can't pull that fightiness out of me. Do you know what I mean? I have to be. I am a protector, man, and I love everybody. Do you know what I mean? But if you if you be a twat to me, I'm gonna fuck you up, man. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Well, that's the way it should be, man. I mean, that's the way it should be, hundred percent. You know, um, there's people who can look after themselves. There's people who can't. And you know, the fact that you're standing up for, you know, for the people that can't or don't want to or whatever, man. I got respect for that. Do you know what I mean? And yes, that's the way it should be in the world. Definitely. You know, it's a strong looking after the weak and and everything because there is that. You know, and different people have got different talents, and you know, and some people are good at something else. But like you said, they're not they're not fighting people. So the fact you're sort of backing them up, man, I love that. And it's uh, it's a story you don't hear too often nowadays because I think a lot of so much stuff now ends in obviously the stabbings and and all the crazy stuff, which which is a shame. But you know, when you can have just a legit, just to straighten and just sort it out, it's the best way to resolve a lot of stuff. I have to ask you. You were saying about fighting for the stuff in in the pocket. So what if you beat a guy and he's only got like you know he's got nothing in his I'm pocket. I'm not after his money. I'm not going to take his phone off of him or his money off of him. I'm not interested in that. If I lose, I'll give him my phone and I'll give him my money. But I'm not mm. after his phone or his money. It's a mind concept game, yeah? Man, if you someone comes up, it's, it's the, I'm not interested in, in hurting this kid. I just need him to realise that he's, he needs to not be a bully. Do you know what yes. I mean? I need him to realise that, you know, you can't just go around throwing your weight around at everybody. Do you know what I mean? Because one day you're going to meet your maker and you need to decide what the fuck to do. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Um, and I, I, I check people out. I, I question people, you know, straight. If I if, if I walk into a bar and I see somebody uh, who's got a bit of a beef, like literally, I mean, my my wife's a little bit of a good looker. Do you know what I mean? And like, I, I'm a little bit of a weird, I look a bit of a weirdo. Do you know what I mean? I've got a big ponytail. I dye my hair green when I fight. And I, I sometimes walk around in a suit. Sometimes I don't. But if I'm there in a suit, people look at me and go, eh, why the fuck is that girl with you? Do you know what I mean? Uh, who the fuck are you? And, and and people, especially who take coke and stuff like that, they get paranoid. I mean, the last time me and my wife were out together, I, I literally caught to blow up. I was looking after a blind lad. The blind kid came out with us all uh, and he couldn't see. He could open his eyes, but he couldn't see. Do you know what I mean? And you wouldn't know he was blind unless you've seen him with a stick. And so I'm in protection mode, do you know what I mean, with him. And when I do drink, I don't get drunk. I only have a couple because I always want to know where I'm at. Do you know what I mean? And straight away, I clocked this guy who clocked my wife coming over at me, giving me a kiss after he'd been checking her out for 10 minutes, which is fine. I don't mind. I don't know. Get your eyes on her. No problem. Do you know what I mean? But he couldn't accept the fact that she was with me, not just with me, but I'm married to her. Do you know what I mean? She's my wife and we've got three kids together. I trust her with anything. Um, and I could see that there's problem there. There's beef there. So I needed to close that beef before it came a problem. Do you know what I mean? So I literally stood at a bar, walked straight over to the bar where we stood and he was facing away from the bar and I wanted to get next to him. And straight away, I could feel the tension, not from me, because I'm not bothered, I'm relaxed. And he was, he could feel his heart going, man, do you know what I mean? And he literally, because I, I parked my ass next to him, and there's a massive bar, he turned around towards the bar, and he actually ended up giving uh, three, four shots at one of them, at them um, uh, pumps, you know, that I've got ice on. And he's mm. whacking that. And I'm like, wow, man, you know, this guy's definitely got some beef, but he's that, he's, he's that much of a pussy, you can't tell me why he's got a problem with me. Because you don't even know why he's got a problem with me. Do you know what I mean? He probably doesn't even know himself why he's got a problem with me. He just has because he's paranoid. He thinks I'm going to maybe do something because I'm unpredictable. I'm a skinny lad. I don't look like nothing. And and and, and most people think I could walk all over us in a breath until it until it happens. Do you know what I mean? And that's yeah. it. So it happens. Yeah, but that's the thing though. It's not the size of a man. You know, it's just what's inside the man. Do you know what I mean? And that's that's always what the thing. And you can tell, like in the fight game itself now, in terms of like professionally and like pit fighting and all that. A lot of times, you know, the lads come together and, yeah, they've both been training hard or whatever, but you can tell, like, from the mentality, like, from the feeling of it, it's hard to explain. You can get a good feel for who's going to win that, do you know what I mean, just even when they just come head to head or whatever, because you can tell which, you know, which one's got, the, the, like, the real energy coming from inside him and which one is, you know, it's just like bravado and it's just like a layer, it's like on the surface, do you know what I mean, you can tell that. And so many times I've said about, about fights, whether it's, like, bare knuckle fighting or pro boxing or whatever, and like when you're out in town or whatever as well you can you can still see it there but you know like the two guys come together and i think oh you know that guy's going to be the one to, to pull it off or, or that guy's going to back down or whatever because you can tell from the energy do you know what i mean of, the, of i know it sounds it sounds you weird can, but... you can but with the with, with the pit fighting it is a total different ball game 
Uh, even BKB ring fighting, you know, that's that's still another ball game too. Um, completely, it, it, it shakes people's heads around. Do you know what I mean? It, it, this is why the pit fighting. When you go and watch it, you will st- you won't sleep that night. You will stand there or sit in bed, laying down, staring at the ceiling, uh, with your mind going over every single bit that happened, and you thinking. Wow. And you leave because uh, it's a daytime event. So more often than not, you might be home and done by six o'clock. Um, so you're sitting there at six o'clock going, I need to debrief. I've been at these Spartan Wars events and I've had to pull over on the motorway and speak to like a clan of uh, fighters or, or, or fans to debrief. And I never really realised what that was, but that was just sort of square your head away. What the fuck have we just, where, where, where have we just been? What the fuck just happened? And like I need to square my head away. Do you know what I mean? Because that was just mental. Uh, at the adrenaline, the uh, seeing the concept of seeing other fighters. Um, there were a nice documentary done on the last one, on the last show, uh, with a gentleman that um, he 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 was a YouTuber and he did a really good one. And it, it, so it kind of really did get across the mind uh, blag that you get when you go to these places and you see people that are. Uh, organising fights for the next couple of shows and they stood talking to each other. It's like, you know, I really want to fight you and I can't wait to fight you. Uh, I think we'll be a good contrast to styles. Uh, can we get it on? Do you know what I mean? And it's like, p- people can't, can't normally comprehend two people want to fight, but there's no beef, there's no problem. They just want to have a little, just want to showcase their skills in front of people. Do you know what I mean? And that's uh, legitimately, and that's, 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 it's cool, man. And it's different. You don't get that anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you don't get that anywhere else. I mean, that's one of the amazing things about Spartan as a company, you know, as a promotion or whatever, is there is that respect and there is just that, you know, people mostly will just love fighting. And, you know, it's obviously it's such a pure thing as well. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's raw. Kind of, it it's is pure. Raw. It's raw. That's, that's, the cool, that's the coolest thing, man. Yeah. You don't get that, like, you know, with so many other styles. And it's like... I, one of the things I just love about it is this: is there's so little of the things you get in other like other fighting spots. There's so, actually not that much ego, and there's not that much all of this stuff. There's just like pure people who you know what I mean. You want to fight, and it's just a different feeling, and it's just a different like you say. It's raw, it's authentic, man. I just and that's not even a question, man. I just that's a big part of why I love it, and I think a lot yeah. of the fans. Do. But getting into it as well with obviously when you won the world title because obviously you are world champion now, and obviously this fight's a defense coming up. But I, I do want to go back in time a little bit. To when you won the world title and just talk about that and give that a, a little bit of a mention because i think a lot of fans would, would want to hear about that because one of the things i do with these i love to get into things that, that you know the fans don't see do you know what i mean like some of the behind the scenes stuff and they see the fight but they, there's so much more to it so going back to when you won the the, the world title obviously the, the tony Meehan fight and everything there was a massive build up to it so i think a good place to start is actually you know, just before the fight and like the build up. Yeah, man, this is raw from the beginning. Yeah, bear in yeah. mind, I had no problem with Tony whatsoever. You know, no beef, no issues. My wife uh, does the, some of the Spartan clothing where we were jumping on board helping Tony out, but we were struggling working with him because he's not massive pro and stuff like that. He does it himself on online, but it, it didn't really work when we were trying to mingle in together. Um, and uh, the first time I had a little bit of an inkling, bearing in mind I knew that I know his style of fighting, I know he's not a born and bred fighter, uh, he, do, he doesn't train properly, he trains in his, in his, in his garage, in his back garden, uh, he doesn't get coached, he doesn't, he doesn't spar with anybody. Um, you know, he's only just started going to a boxing gym now. He's fighting Billy Broad on the 26th, and I've had Billy Broad over with me training over here. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and I know exactly what how that's going to end, and it's not going to well end for uh, not going to end well for Tony. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, I only started having beef. The thing is, with uh, with training and and any sort of uh, fight, is you get yourself fixated on who you're fighting. Do you know what I mean? And if if they pull out, man, it wrecks your brain. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I dye me a green for mental health purposes in relation to you look. I'm behind everybody who's got mental health issues, and that's the reason I'm a, I'm a going as a Joker. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, the last Joker film, you know, he's, he's got mental health issues, and, and and we all have got mental health issues. Do you know what I mean? Within reason, and when people start pulling on them strings when they don't really need to do like uh, Tony nearly pulled out three times that most people don't know about three times he didn't want to fight me and the last time that he, tra- he tried to pull out well just before the fight because he lost his Facebook and his media pages do you know what I mean and I said listen man we're fighters fighters fight it's as simple as that I don't give a fuck about your Facebook your media or, your, or, or even anything to do with any of that let's just me and you let's just rock and roll man 
do you know what I mean? Put it to side. Anyway, um, he came. He came to fight, man. Do you know what I mean? And uh, you know, he's got a lot of following. He's got a lot of fans that have bigged him up in relation to think, ma- making him think that he could even even attempt to try and beat me. But I think I know so. I don't think so. I know so deep down. He knew he couldn't beat me. It's as simple as that. I had a bag back that day, but not that day. But I, oh yeah, that day. But also four weeks earlier, mate. I could barely even walk, man. Do you know what I mean? I, I was getting up for work and I could barely even drive. I had a weight belt on my, uh, on me constantly. I trained with a weight belt on and that day I took a blow up bed to sit down on because I had a bad back do you know what I mean uh, took my weight belt off got in there and and he, and he did exactly what I thought he was going to do we were going to put his head down and swing at me do you know what I mean so he basically rugby tackled me back to A bales and the A bales that we had that day were too small they were shorter than they are normally uh, now in a normal day I'm not going to lie with them type of A bales I'd have literally spit, turned him and I'd have thrown him out of that pit do you know what I mean? I'd have made him look stupid. Uh, I really would have done, but literally I couldn't do any of that. So I literally sat back on bales, put my hand over my face and let him bang me. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, mate, what is that all you've got, bro? And he literally looked like, he went, that's all I've got. Do you know what I mean? So as soon as he, he, he tried to change his style and stand up straight, that were it, man. I caught him twice with a little one combination, mate. He felt what I'd got and he, and he quit. I didn't beat Tony me. I mean, fucking quit. Do you know what I mean? And that for me as well is another head wrecker. If you look at the last show when a gentleman quit, uh, Carl Fox quit uh, on one of the lads, yeah, and he started crying there and then the other lads because he didn't get his chance to fight. Do you know what I mean? He was crying at tears, mate, proper tears, yeah, because the guy quit on him, yeah, and Tony quit on me. That is what Matt gets me angry now just talking about it, bro. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, but you know what? I'm a man. I'm a gentleman as well. So I went around to the pit. I went around to the to his side of the corner afterwards. I put his hand in the air. Says, "There you go, bro. Listen, this Tony got in the pit with me, and I think he's fucking mental for doing that." Do you know what I mean? He should. He don't belong in there with me. He'd never, ever, ever got matched up with me on any boxing show or any other bare knuckle show. You know, he's not a fighter. It's as simple as that. And 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 I put his hand up, and everyone says, "Well done, lads. Fair enough." And he, the guy didn't even bring his belt, the belt, the world championship belt. He never even brought it, bro. So, like you say, me winning that belt, man. I didn't win anything that day. I won nothing. I didn't have to fight for it. All I had to do was turn up and stand there. And, and literally fucking quit. And I had no belt to show off of anyway. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and then what, what most people don't know about, which is fucking doing my nothing, uh, is um, uh, afterwards, he called my wife a, a, a stalking rat online, right? Which most people don't know about. But um, obviously, I, we tried to squish it. Uh, you know, I didn't want no major league trouble to kick off. Um but he wouldn't apologise. You see, he wouldn't apologise because he thought my wife was stalking him online. Bearing in mind, she'd already deleted all his Facebook, all his media and everything. And what it actually was, well, one of his own followers, his own fans, was screenshotting bullshit that he'd said about me and sent it to me. His own fans were sending me his own stuff. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I said to the boss, man, I said, listen, I said, you need to get this sorted now. I said, I, all I wanted were a public apology, right? Just saying, look, mate, I'm sorry for calling his missus a rat. Um, I, I was, you know, stressed or whatever, and I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, motherfucker never did it. So I don't play games. If I've got a problem with someone, I'm coming straight to your house and I'm going to knock on your door, mate. It's as simple as that. And I don't care where you live, neither whether you live in fucking Spain or, or anywhere, bro, I'm coming. It's as simple as that. Um, and that's what I had to do. Do you know what I mean? And the next day, he told Christian, he says, um, all right, Rob's knocked on my door. Um, no, he wouldn't even answer his door. Do you know what I mean? But literally, uh, he, he he said, I want you to get rid of Rob or I'm leaving. And Christian says, well, what can I do? Do you know what I mean? Can I, how the fuck do I put on Spartan page, look, we're going to have to get rid of Rob and Crystal because Rob's defending his wife. You can't do that. Do you know what I mean? And not only that is, I'm a proper fighter. I'm a genuine, I'm a, I'm, I'm, you know, I hurt people. Do you know what I mean? If I need to do. And Tony's not, but he's good with his media and he looks good. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and that's it. That's all he does is, you know, he's got the right body for it and he's got the right fucking buttons to press. Uh, and that's how he gets where he's got. Do you know what I mean? And, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of followers out there that don't really understand. They're asking me, can I help him sell tickets and stuff? And, and it says Tony's name all over him. And I says, who are you promoting? You can't sell tickets, but yet you're promoting Tony. Oh, uh, fights for a different company now. Do you know what I mean? He fights on a different show and a different company, and you're advertising that motherfucker. What for? Do you know what I mean? You're stupid. But there's loads of it. You'll see it all the time. 
Man, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, man. You come up to my, you come up to Spartan Wars, and and, and, I, and you come up to me to shake my hand with a fucking Tony Meehan top on. But I ain't shaking your hand, bro. It's as simple as that. And what's he done? He's a sponsor. He's giving you a fucking free T-shirt with his name on it. It's not even branded up in your own stuff. Do you know what I mean? And you're sharing it all over, thinking you're getting big licks from it. Man, a guy can't even sell tickets on his own show. Do you know what I mean? I, you, obviously, you can tell I've got bad blood there. Do you know what I mean? We'd, I didn't even have a fight with the kid. Um, or even when I went to his pad, I never even had a fight with him. But, you know, there's certain things that wind people up, and that's why me up. And if, it, if, it, if this, this shit kicks off again, then, we'll, you know, we'll see what we're... Do you know what I mean? But I don't fucking shy away from nothing. Uh, but I'm I, I am I actually growled me. Do you know what I mean? As people say, oh, world champion. I, that's not world champion fight. I'm fighting a Mexican next. Guys flying from Mexico. People go, oh, what, a, Mex a Mexican? What's it from Bradford or something? Like, no, mate. Listen, he lives in fucking Mexico. He's flying over from Mexico to England to jump off a plane to have a scrap with me. And then once, once I've beaten him, he's then going to fly back. Do you know what I mean? To his homeland. And it is what it is after that. Um, there's no beef between me and uh, Aguello. I've got full respect for the guy. I watch him train, seeing what he does. Uh, he's a good lad. He's a good fighter. He's a born and bred fighter. And he lives for it, trains every day. He's a professional. Um, and I hope he brings everything that he's got with him to that table and then let's rock and roll. But until he's here, you know, until that, until he's actually landed, then I'm just yeah. stalling my breath, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes total sense. I mean, there's so many things there. And again, it's really good because we've gone into stuff that, that the fans don't see. I mean, you know, like some of the behind the scenes things that went on with Tony and all that. I mean, there's probably a lot of people haven't heard of it. With the Mexican coming in as well, I mean, with this fight now, do you see this as more, because you were saying obviously with, with the world title last time, Tony quit and this and that, and you didn't feel that it was really, you know, like a world title win like that. So we were never going to be a good fight in the first place. I mean, I used to laugh and think, man, when put, somebody puts a post up saying who was going to win, Tony or Rob, and people had put Tony, me and, and but they're fans of his, but then they'd message me afterwards and go, I know you're going to ring. There's some of his people that he, like, that he sponsors who come and train with me sometimes, and they go, and, and, and they'll have a little tiny move around with me, and they'll be like, fuck me, I've had a move around with Tony, and fuck me, mate, yeah, he's going to die, bro. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, what's he doing about it? Do you know what I mean? What is he doing about it? And the answer's fuck all. He's not trained. Like he said, he said to you, he don't spar and he's not going to spar until he gets proven otherwise. The answer to that, the real reason for that is because he can't walk into a gym, uh, at any boxing gym really, without people wanting a piece of him. He's a world champ. So people, just like I am, yeah, people people get on the Google, uh, they walk in my gym and Google and they see me training and it's, oh, that's Robbie over there. Um, and they think, oh, I'll take him out. Man, I'll take him out. They'll watch that last fight with me and Tony and think, man, that guy's shit, I'll batter him. All right, let's go in that ring and let's have a little move around then. So people on purpose, they come to my gym to try and take me out and try and fuck me up. Heavyweights, you know, uh, pros, ex-pros, all that. And, 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 and they think they're coming in there to take me out. And you know what? I leave, they leave with nothing but respect for me because I, I literally have to coax them through it sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I, I, I understand why they're doing what they're doing. I also understand why Tony never went to them gyms because... He can't do what I can do. Do you know what I mean? And and then then people are gonna put it on him and I fuck him up. Do you know what I mean? And it's not it's not nice getting fucked up when you're meant to be. You know how 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 can you be a you know champion at world and getting your ass kicked in in a, in a little bit of a fucking move around? And you can't. Do you know what I mean? You can't do it. Yeah, I get I get the perspective on it 100. percent And again, you know, it's, it's a really good insight into the you know the different mentalities there. And as well as that though, like I was saying with you know with this Mexican kid now though. Like, when you beat him and, you know, assuming you do because, you know, he's a good fighter as well, but, you know, do you think that that'll be like your like your actual world title win, though, in the sense that, you know, it's professional against professional and you, and you obviously feel differently about him than you felt about Tony and everything like that. So do you think you'll come out of there feeling more, you know, that you've really got the belt because obviously the guy, I mean, he won't quit, will he? I mean, it's just going to be a knockout or whatever. He's not going to quit, bro. He's going to give everything he's got, do you know what I mean, which is good. And and I, like I've said to, to Christian, I said, look, it's not a world title fight until you fought somebody from abroad. Do you know what I mean? So find find the op operator that you can find abroad and, and roll from there. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But there's a few things in pipeline. Uh, there's, uh, you know, my next fight pretty much could be confirmed after that. And that's going to be a tasty little fight. There's only a few of us who know what's going to happen with that one. Um well, that's going to be a brilliant fight. That was the next one after this one. And um, and then I've, there's a few little hints. There's possibilities, maybe, possibly going to America. Uh, there's possibilities that American coming back over here after that. 
Uh, and then there's talks with, uh, there's only talks, but there's talks with other people that are well known in the bare knuckle world uh, that do want a piece of me. They want to go, do you know what I mean? And they want to have a go, not just at me, but also at the pit itself, because pit fighting is not bare knuckle boxing. Pit fighting is not boxing or bare knuckle boxing or in a ring. It is, it's a fight. It is just a fight, do you know what I mean? And it's a skillful fight and there's implementations of reasons why, uh, you know, why, why we are where we are. And, you know, even though it looks crappy, most people look at it on, 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 on the phones and think, yeah, man, I could do that. I could probably knock half of them people out. That's fine. No problem. But have a go. But don't just have a go. But they are, one of the hardest things is building up to that fight because you've never done, if you've never done it before, building up. And then when you see the size of that pit, mentality mentality you know you're not dancing there's no way to recover like in a ring if you've got good footwork you could get pinged and you could still move around that ring and recover if you get pinged in that pit where are you going you go on a walk if you get pinged in that pit, that pit you're going to walk onto another right or left hand and it's as simple as that so can you get pinged and then carry on getting pinged and still be all right can you do that can you break your jaw and keep going i've got metal i've got metal plates in my jaw all the way across i've had it snapped i've had it snapped there do you know what I mean? And, and, and after I had it stamped on by three guys, um, I got up and I, I wasn't knocked out. I was still ready to roll and, and I wanted to carry on fighting. And if it weren't for a few girls that were there and a few lads that were on the other people or the other guys' uh, side uh, that wouldn't let me actually fight or continue because of the state of my face, um, that's, that's, oh, I'd have carried on with, with a jaw sideways. Do you know what I mean? It, wouldn't, it didn't matter to me. Um, just, just keep, just keep going. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that is incredible. I mean, that is something you don't hear every day, mind. Do you know what I mean? It's like even, even when I do interviews like this all the time with different fighters, you, you don't hear that every day. I've, I have met one or two people who've been in situations. I mean, I interviewed one guy who was a fighter who got hit over the back of his head with a hammer and that, and he, you know, and as you, I've heard a couple of stories, but you don't hear it often, and that's, that's just oh. a different. You, you, know, you know what, my, my mentality is this, right? Literally, I was 15 years old, boxing at 14, uh, and I've done all sorts of martial arts, judo, karate, the whole lot. And and literally, when I was, um, I was 15 years old, and, I, and a young lad was getting bullied at school, younger than me, and I was good friends with his older, with his older brother, right? And I says, listen, uh, don't pick on him. Yeah, uh, it's not fair. He don't want to fight you. He don't want to bully you. So just leave him alone, right? These two kids said, oh, you go and get your big boy. You go and, we'll go and get our big boy. I says, go and find the biggest guy that you can find, right? And I'll fight him. It's as simple as that. They got the biggest lad that they could find, one-on-one -on -one fight and a beat him. Simple as that. Two days later, um, word got out that uh, this this guy is a well-known person and he were going to get, he were going to come after me after school, right? I'm going to meet me at the train station. So he's got his gang, which is a uh, massive two schools, colleges, uh, all big boys from there uh, sitting at the train station. And I've got a massive crew behind me from Salt School, right? Big crew full of lads and women all ready to rock and roll. Gets up to the train station. There's a little slope leading down to this train station. You can see the train station rams, rams with these, these college lads all ready to, you know, all bigger and older than what we were. Do you know what I mean? Ready to fight us, yeah? And I says, right, lads, they're down there. Let's do this. And every one of them, honestly, bro, every one of these lads on my team said, nah, man, fuck that. We're going to walk instead. We're going to walk. Uh, and I'm like... Nah, mate. I said, well, I'm off this way. I said, because if I don't go this way, they're only going to get on me on another day. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going this way. And I walked down on my own. I had two lads that were there to not necessarily help me out, but just just being there, do you know what I mean? Really wanted to see or or, or just watch it, do you know what I mean? And same with a couple of other uh, uh, lasses that came down as well. Uh, and that's the mentality of me. Do you know what? There's danger in front of me. And, and you know what? I'm going towards it. I'm not running away from nothing. Do you know what I mean? And I went down there and I got stamped, I got robbed, I got all my gold taken off me. Uh, I didn't get knocked out. They've nicked out of my school bags, I've just done PE. And a little stamping on my head uh, while I was trying to protect myself, do you know what I mean? Uh, while I were on the train. Train stopped. I, I, I got off, they got off, and then I was ready to roll again and then it got stopped. Do you know what I mean? And and that's that's a fighter's mentality. You know, you just fucking keep going, man. Just, just, just balls deep every single time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it, man. That is that is war mentality right there. You know, that is that is something for fight fans to, to hear about. Um, wow. Because when I said we we're going to get into your psychology and that, I mean, we really 
really got into it, which is which I think is awesome, man. Because it's you know what I mean. It's it's a really different perspective on it. So and I'm a lovely like, guy, though. I don't I don't think I'm all that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like I'm not like oh I'll knock you out, yada yada, and all of that. I'm not even yeah. interested in hurting anybody. I'm just a nice. I am a nice guy, but if if, if you push the wrong buttons, you know it's it, it don't always don't go well. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, but that's the thing, though, isn't it? I mean, when when people are real fighting people now, and I mean, like legit, like what we're talking about here. Obviously, you don't have that chip on your shoulder of having like I've got to prove it to somebody because obviously yeah. you know yeah. it's you know inside yourself that you know you can handle any situation. So obviously, and when I've met people like that, you know, it, it's like it's a whole different thing. Because then, and this is where the, you know the public perception, like the stereotype of fighters being like bullying people and all this. Most of them are not. If they're any good, they're not because obviously they know that they don't have to go around proving like oh I'm mad and I'm this and that. Because obviously you know you, you look at yourself in the mirror and you know what's what type of thing, do you know what I mean? So they don't have to prove it. Whereas like obviously when you get some insecure people and they don't really know what they're made of and they have this, this issue and that, and then obviously you get like your bullies and you get all your people, which which I've found are usually, you know, they don't have that inner strength, they're usually much weaker and they've usually got a whole different mindset to everything than like an actual fighting person, do you know what I mean? And this is something why it's, it's really cool to get into your side of it because obviously you're obviously a nice guy, you're obviously like a gentleman, like a family man, and because obviously that sort of comes over as well, like the family side of things, which, you, which I love and, and respect that. So, yeah, I don't think you give the perception that you're going around hurting people, but, you know, you just love the challenge of it. And it's like, you know, some people, you know, some people jump on planes and stuff, and some people do other things for that challenge. But, like, your challenge is, is like, going toe-to-toe -to -toe and, do you know what I mean, and, and seeing, like, how far it can go. And it's like, it's a strange example, but, you know, when, when they talk to the people who climb to like Mount Everest and they, they climb to the top of it and they say, well, like, why do you want to climb that? I mean, you've got so much risk there, you could die, you get frostbite, you could get this, you could get that. Why, why, like, why do you want to do it? And they were like, well, I want to do it because because it's there, like to see if I can do it, like, to see if, if I have Push yourself to that limit and some push yourself over that limit. You're, you're talking about Mount Everest. There's a film, there's a, a documentary out there, I think it's on Netflix called 14 Peaks, right? And yeah. the guy climbed 14 peaks. The only person who ever done that, or uh, 14 peaks over 8,000 feet, is one guy mm -hmm. that, um, he did it in 15 years, right? This guy did it in seven months with his crew, right? Seven months, mortgaged, remortgaged his house to be able to fund it, and he did it with with a set of Gurkhas, uh, and that's balls deep, mate. The guy's risking his life. I'm not risking my life in that pit. Do you know what I mean? No one's going to kill me in there. Yeah, I might die. I might not die. I might get broken jaws, or I might, you know, might lose an eye. Do you know what I mean? I might be blind, um, but I'm not dying. Do you know what I mean? I'm not. I'm not dying. On the street, though, I mean, with some of the stuff you're telling me, you're because you're saying about being stabbed and, and all this. Yeah, but well, then, on the street, yeah. right? Okay, with well, the things on the street, I, I, I'm wise, right? Okay, let's just say there's 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 a group of people, and there's one of them that's been an asshole, right? There's, you never get normally a full group being an asshole, right? You normally get one person being a prick, right? Yeah. My motto, and I teach my kids the same, is that one prick it wants battering as fast as you can. You fuck them up and you run away. Because I don't need to fight his friends. His friends are obviously going to stick up for him. And I, 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 you cannot risk getting grabbed. Do you know what I mean? You need yeah. to fuck up that one person who deserves to get fucked up and you get out of there. And I've done it I've done it enough times where I've battered that one person and I've ran away. And sometimes, all right, I have got caught and I have had to fucking fight a couple of them. But then I've, and then I get out of there. Do you know what I mean? Um, I remember walking down, ran, running down a street away from a gang of lads that I've just had a fight with one of them. Um, and uh, I've turned, I, I was getting caught up and I was, I was getting oxygen starved and I thought they're going to catch me. And I turned around because I knew we were just on my toes. I turned around, literally just about to whack him and I seen his police badge on his side. So I was like, whoa. I, I literally, I, I bent over his bonnet on his on, a con, on his undercover cop car and I said, quick, just fucking put, arrest me, put my cuffs on me and put me in that car because I thought he'd saved, he, he had saved my life because for me, I was get, getting oxygen starved and I thought that there were five or six lads after me. Do you know what I mean? Um, and luckily, it was a police officer uh, that arrested me. He also arrested the guy who I'd actually beaten up and they, they said to me, they said, in sale, I'm stood. I'm, in, I'm stood there in, in this like entrance bit, and the guy walks past me covered in blood, and they went, "Fuck me, that guy's massive." Do you know what I mean? I said, "How did you manage to do that?" Do you know what I mean? And I went, "Well, it's just, it is what it is, isn't it?" Do you know what I mean? And uh, they, I think they arrested him, and they also arrested me, but they, they only arrested me for drunk. I wasn't drunk, but they arrested me for drunk and disorderly because of the the, the current situation. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
yeah, do what you need to do to that person who's been a div and get the fuck out of there, man. That's my wider warning for everybody. Do you know, there's no reason to stand there thinking you're big and taking everybody on because you can't. You can't do it. It's possible. Do you know what I mean? And plus, with yeah. the fact that people doing MMA nowadays, there's that many people doing MMA uh, cage fighting and stuff. They'll tie you up in knots. And then what you're going to do when you're tied up in a knot and there's more of them than there is of you, they're just going to stand on you and stamp you. Do you know what I mean? You haven't got time to fuck about. That's the thing though, isn't it? It's getting out there. It is, it is wise, you know, because there's brave and then there's like stupid. But stupid. it's interesting. Yeah, exactly. What I've seen, you know, is I've seen in that situation as well, where like you take out like the leader or the one who's, who's sort of going off. And I've seen it in situations where then some of the other guys, they run off. Like when they're, when their main guy, I know you're saying they're chasing you, but one of the things I've sort of come across is like, you know, when, when the main guy, and it's usually not the guy with the, with the biggest goal, but sometimes it is, you can tell who the sort of leader sort of is, you know. And then the other guys, they, they, I've seen like, they, they're out of there, they're like, their main man's gone, so they're like, oh, fuck this, and they're just, they're just gone, you know. So I've seen that, but I've also seen it like when, they, when you're chasing people and, and all that as well, it, it depends. But it's, man, it's, you know what, it's an insight into, into the mentality of, of a champion, because I still think, I still think you're a champion from the mentality that you have and from the real sort of war mentality that you have and do you know what I mean and, and that sort of stuff. So, you know, but it's it's been a really good insight into that. It's been a really good insight into like a lot of the psychological stuff of the training, obviously the pit fighting and, and a lot of stuff, man. And obviously I know I said it'd be like twenty five minutes and we've gone like way like way in depth. So before we wrap it up, you know, just for people's attention spans and, and everything like that. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to, to your fans and your supporters out there? Because some people watching this, it might be the first time they've seen you, the first time they've heard of you, and they're, and you know, maybe the first time they've heard of Spartan even, you know, and they, and they probably have the experience like what I had when I first saw this. What is this? And they want to get into it. But, like, for the people that already do support you, because obviously some of them will be watching this, and, and from a sport point of view, obviously it's nothing without the fans. What would you say to them? Because I, I don't want to leave them out of this. You know, yeah, man. Uh, obviously, uh, yeah, I thank everybody who comes and buys tickets and watches the shows uh, and supports us. Even if they don't even come and don't even buy tickets, if, the, if the, the, there's that many people that follow us or from all over the world online, uh, send me good messages. Um, you know, uh, literally, it's, it's amazing. It's, it, it's really, really good. Uh, Spartan Wars is going places, guys. Like, I'm not even joking. You know, I'm not no mug. I'm not no muppet. And I'm not here. I'm not here for Spartan Wars for no reason. There's so many people are trying to tempt me to go to other stuff, this and that. We'll offer you this, we'll offer you that. You know what? Man, I don't even care, bro. Man, I fight for free any day a week. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's as simple as that. It costs me to fight money, to fight. I'm not massively that fussed about too many sponsors. Um, I just train and I fight for myself. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. And what Spartan Wars is a different breed. It's not bare knuckle boxing. It's a total different breed. The fighters are different. The mentality is different. And and all I can say is like, let's just say there's people that 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 have business meetings, uh, like uh, the the rent a VIP table out, yeah, uh, and they put ten people around. They sit around them with laptops and stuff and on the phones, you know, uh, talking business and stuff. Uh, you are not coming to a bare knuckle pit fighting show and talking about business. So all the businessmen that are wanting to do, thinking about even trying that, don't even waste your time, bro. Invite them, man, as a, as a, as a business organisation to go and check some, have some fun. But don't try and talk about business because it ain't happening. And all you're going to be doing is it's sat there in awe about watching what's going on and the atmosphere behind you uh, with, from the fans and everything else. And it's somewhat different, man. It, you just don't, you can't pay for it. You know, it's, it's, you can't put a price on that. What it, what it is, how good it is, it really is good. It is amazing, and honestly, man, it's it's a sport and an organisation that's just on the up and up, and it's absolutely, you know, I mean, you look at like how the shows are growing. This isn't even a question, but I just just want to say this to, to anyone who's watching, if it's like their first time sort of looking at Spartan or hearing from one of the champs. Honestly, it, it's definitely on the up and up. It's got to be the most pure fighting sport out there. No bullshit. There's no. There's none of the politics and the, and people ducking people and all that stuff that you get obviously in a lot of sports with pro boxing and, and MMA and all that. Now I love those sports. But That's it. So much- I mean, I, we all love them sports. I mean, you know, we all watch boxing at weekends. You, Kell Brook and um, Amir Khan. Do you know what I mean? But, but what probably a lot of people don't really realise is journeymen that are involved in bringing uh, up and coming fighters up. And on that show, you got to see witnessed. Uh, up and coming journeymen, you know, uh, on that show that were doing really, really well. But you also got to see another card that 
people were pulling out left, right and centre and people were getting thrown in there that shouldn't have even been in there. There were one guy at Fraser, were uh, heavyweight um, ex-silver uh, or bronze medalist, mm-hmm. um, here, big lads, heavyweight, yeah. And he went in to get a guy, apparently, this is what I've been told, uh, that they were talking about on, on, on the interview, that the guy who had a two white-collar boxing matches and he'd only just applied for his licence, got granted his licence, and he jumped in there with an ex-Olympic uh, uh, medalist, that's yeah. like that's dangerous, man. That is un that's unforeseen, mate. You just you just don't do that. But you know what? One thing what what I what I like to a lot of a lot of them are going, you know what? We don't get paid for overtime in this game. Yeah. We don't get paid for overtime in this game. And the fighting journeyman, and they wanted to get them out of there as quick as they could. Ah, fuck that. Do you know what I mean? You, you know, you don't yeah, we don't get paid for overtime, but if you don't love fighting, what are you in there for? Why do you train for 12 and 15 rounds when uh, you're wanting to get them out of there in one? Man, enjoy it. My man there for five rounds. Do you know what I mean? With this guy. And, you know, if we get through five rounds with him, man, I'm buzzing. It's as simple as that. Uh, does he want to be in there for five rounds with me? I wouldn't want to be in there five rounds with myself. Not really. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, I would want to be in there. If we've any man who can stand there for five rounds and give me licks. Um, and, you know what? If he beats me, then that's fine. Fair play. But this man's not beating me. No chance. Uh, not not even in the iota. But, you know what? If you could take me five rounds, man, fair play to the guy. Happy days. Let's do five rounds. Yeah. Yeah, well, you love it. And that's the difference, obviously, about yourself and about, I think, a lot of people with Spartan. You know, a lot of people are drawn to Spartan. And that's part of the reason, you know, it's on the app. And that is, is there's a lot of guys that are like true fighters in there. They love what they do. You know, there's that respect. Even when people, like, obviously, before they fight, but like you were saying earlier, after they fight, you're just shaking hands getting each other a beer or whatever and just do you know what I mean and it's just it's a whole different thing so anyone if out there if it's like their first exposure to it honestly it's on the sport uh, you know it's up and up and Christian Roberts as well like his vision for the sport and where it can go like every time I speak to him on the phone he's got new ideas he's got new deals you know he's just definitely mate Christian and I together Ivan honestly together are a tag team bro you know what the balance of each other Ivan's a businessman he understands how it works how the money works and you know what there's going to be some big changes and we know we, we as, a, as a business they're going to be flying man they, they've got some you know it, it, it is people are watching it and people are like man this is just different do you know what I mean there's some there's some mad stuff going on here um, and we need to be a part of it and it, it, there's going to be so so much interaction with other companies uh, in and around the world do you know what I mean that are going to be interested in what it is that we do and can we put it on over there in di- different areas yeah man let's just see let's just let's just see what happens and we've got the right people behind us now uh, to do that you know to fight financial backing uh, who people who know that it needs to grow slowly as well not too fast because we were we were bigger before like we where we ended up uh, fighting in hotels see the courts and stuff like that you know with a thousand people there um you know that were that were unbelievable that and obviously with covid and everything else yeah you know what let's not dive straight back in the deep end let's build it back up let's build that stable of fighters back up uh and let's build the show back up and and the, the, the attract the right people uh and the right people with the right mentality of you know coming fighting and doing what they need to do and respectively you know there's no there's no there's no there's no assholes out there there's no idiots out there it is what it is i know me and tony had, I, I, you know we had a bit of beef uh it is what it is you know as far as i'm concerned it's squished now do you know what i mean he, he's doing his own thing i'm doing my own thing and let's hope it goes to bed if it don't go to bed then you know we'll have to come back out of bed well it's as simple as that but let's hope that it just gets squished yeah hopefully it will hopefully it will but champ, I want to say, you know, just a big thank you for your time, mate. Because honestly, I, I mean, personally, I've really enjoyed this this chat, you know, that we've had. We've got into it. You know, we can always do another one in the future as well. Because I know, you know, you've got some big things on the horizon. Um, but for now, I mean, that's that's a lot for for people to listen to and enjoy. Yeah, man, my gym class starts in twenty minutes, bro. So I'm gonna have to disappear. You know what I'm saying? But it's uh, it's been a good one, mate. It's been absolutely honestly. And I'm not just saying this because you're here now. It's been one of the ones I've done a lot of interviews. I've done I don't know how many I've done, but so many. I, this is one of my top, like in my top ten. Like I really, yeah, really, really, I don't talk shit. Do you know what I mean? I don't talk shit, and 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 don't don't you? I, I say I didn't want you to be scared of asking any questions. Um, like say we're like when we you know like you say when Tony was saying shit to you about you know you don't really spar on that. I'd I'd probably to be honest with you. I, I would I kind of expected you to pull him apart. Do you know what I mean? Like you could have ripped him to death. Do you know what I yeah. mean? And and what the fuck are you doing? You know. You're gonna come up against. I'm not stupid, me man. I might be hard as fuck, but I'm not. I'm not saying that um, there's nobody out there that can beat me. Do you know what I'm saying? Not at all. Especially in a pit. 
Um, there is people out there. There's plenty of people out there. But, um, it, you know, it is what it is. And, and, and you've got, you know, you've got to sort of like pull them up. Put, them people that are fake, man, just fucking shoot them down, man. Shoot them down. Yeah, 100%, mate. 100%. I will do. I will do. But listen, you have a good gym class, man. Nice to meet you, bro. Top man. You top man, champ. Big respect. See you yeah? soon, bro. Yeah, okay.